Um, I remember in 2016, after his book, Hillbilly Elegy, came out, all of the business community in Cleveland thought he would be the future centrist Republican of Ohio. There was none of the confrontational stuff, and people were excited that he could be the future what happened in 2020, it just turned upside down. He became this invective spewing guy that nobody recognizes. J.D. Vance is a phony. He, he's fake. I mean, he first says that, that Donald Trump is like Hitler, and, and now he's acting like he's Lincoln. I don't think Ohio can be in play at all. So he didn't need Vance to get Ohio. I, I think he wanted him for his young looks. Democrats are ramping up their attacks against J.D. Vance, Trump's VP pick. So the ammunition that they were using against him initially was the fact that he was a never Trumper. And now they're saying, oh, you folded. They must have paid you off. You're nothing but Trump Jr. Now you're Hitler 2.0. Biden called him a clone of Trump. So people are trying to use that against them. But what's happened recently over the last day or so is a video from 2021 resurfaced of J.D. Vance calling people like Kamala Harris, AOC, Pete Buttigieg. He called them childless cat ladies because these people don't have children. Now Kamala Harris, she does have stepchildren. She married some white man, even though the white man is supposed to be so bad. She married this white man who had two children. He had a daughter who was already an adult when Kamala married him. And he had a son who was in high school at the time that they got married. So people are saying, well, does that even count? Because one was already grown and out of the house and the other one was on his way out. But J.D. Vance was saying that all of these people who are allegedly the future of the Democrat Party, they are childless. So they don't have a stake in the game. They don't have a long term outlook and stake in the country future of the country you're trying to put these people in leadership positions but they don't have the concrete values needed for a leader because they don't have children because they lack that outlook because they lack that stake in the game and this is one of the biggest differences between the republicans and the democrats family values because Republicans, they value a strong nuclear family. They value pick yourself up by your own bootstraps. That's what they push to their children. They say, look, you don't need big daddy government to take care of you. You don't need the government to give you handouts. Your family is going to teach you. We got your back. We'll be your safety net. And you're going to go out and make some on your own without having to have your hand out begging people for stuff. Democrats. They like socialism. They want the government to pay for everything. They want unlimited welfare. They want the government to pay for college, everything. So they're teaching their children rely on the government while Republicans have a completely different outlook. Democrats are saying, yeah, we are completely okay with all types of weird sex stuff going on, LGBT, LMNOP crap going on in schools. The government gets to tell you what they're going to teach your children, the values that the teachers need to have. And if you have a question about the curriculum, too bad, so sad, it's none of your business. While the Republicans are saying, no, what's important to us is whatever family values we have at home needs to also be at school. So we don't need to have all types of weird left wing ideology pushed to our children because we have a different view of the family. And like I said, the right values a strong nuclear family while the left they have an insane amount of abortions. They can say you can go out and be willing to be carefree, do all types of weird sex stuff. Don't worry, you don't have to keep the kid. Some of them are even saying up to the ninth month, you just get rid of the kid, just like that. And they're also okay, completely okay with relationships like Pete Booty getting two men, raising little children. Remember that story about that two male couple with children and monkey pox in the home, whatever, that's, but that's a different video. But I can go on and on about this, the differences in family values between Republicans and Democrats. But we're going to look at the CNN clip of Kamala's husband's ex-wife coming out defending her, saying, oh, no, we're a parental trio. She's such a good mom. We call her mama love. We raised the kids together, even though Kamala didn't come into the kids' lives to the very last minute. But, yeah, we raised the kids together. She's such a great parent. And if you say anything against her, you're just sexist. So the left is going to say... J.D. Vance is a misogynist. He's a sexist. They're going to fail. Most of them fail to address the issue he raised in terms of having a stake in the game. And they're just going to say, no, you're just a sexist and misogynist. So let's look at this CNN clip. And it also shows the little snippet of J.D. Vance making his comments to Tucker Carlson about this topic. Emhoff's ex-wife. Okay, now why do I mention her? 
because she is coming to Kamala Harris's defense. In an extraordinary statement to CNN, Kirsten Emhoff, who is the mother of Harris's two stepchildren, responded to attacks like this one against Harris. We're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. Kirsten Emhoff telling our Sunland Sarfati, and I quote her, these are baseless attacks. For over 10 years, since Cole and Ella were teenagers, Kamala has been a co-parent with Doug and I. She is loving, nurturing, fiercely protective, and always present. I love our blended family and am grateful to have her in it. And Sunlin Sarfati is out front with more. I've had a lot of titles over my career, and certainly vice president will be great. But Mamala will always be the one that means the most. It's a title Vice President Kamala Harris is proud of. Family is our beautiful children, Cole and Ella, who call me Mamala. But now that she has been elevated to the top of the ticket, that title, stepmother, is again in the spotlight. My family means everything to me. With some conservatives suggesting she should not be president because she does not have biological children. Really simple, under-discussed reason why Kamala Harris shouldn't be president. No children. A conservative lawyer who worked on Ron DeSantis' campaign wrote this week on social media, adding, and no, becoming a step-parent to older teenagers doesn't count. That echoes similar comments made by now Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance in 2021. We're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. Which are being resurfaced anew as he and his running mate Donald Trump seek to define Harris for voters. It's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? Harris does have children, two adult stepchildren, Cole and Ella, who were 19 and 15 when she married Doug Emhoff in 2014. We have a very modern family. Very quickly, Scott. I'm, I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that, that uh, Tim is worried about these comments from three or four years ago. Just 60 seconds ago, he said things that Kamala Harris said three or four years ago shouldn't matter. No voter is going to care about that. They only care about the future. But we got to care about some, uh, you know, thing J.D. Vance said in an interview before he was ever even uh, elected U.S. Senator from Ohio. I guess double standard, maybe. So people are saying he's one of the worst selections Trump should have made. Trump should have never picked this man. How terrible. Now he's about to bring Trump down. They're saying that he's completely blind to this and he doesn't understand women's issues. They're also trying to deflect to IVF, trying to say, well, some women can't have children. So we have thousands of babies born per year through IVF, but they're trying to make it as if J.D. Vance is talking only about IVF, not just about the millions of women who choose to not have kids and all of the cat ladies. And some people are saying, well, the Republicans, they're against IVF, but at the same time, they try to bash us for not having children. But the Republican Party, they're split on IVF. Trump is actually for IVF, but the whole topic of IVF, that's a different conversation. So now let's look at this clip of the views, the cackling hands, a little snippet of them also taking shots at J.D. Vance for these comments. Well, in hearing that clip, the, you know, th there are so many places to go. The people that can't have kids, yeah. the people that have proudly chosen not to, yeah. uh, that. But the part that really disgusts me is that he thinks by the fact that you have children, that's how you look through the lens of politics. Mm -hmm. I have children, and I can assure you that is not my first thought when I think about politics. My kids are going to obviously be affected by that, but anyone with a heart will look at the moral clarity of the decisions we're making here. The people that are at risk here, like women facing issues about the agencies of their, and, and he touches on that in his quote, but the agency of their own bodies. I care about all the women that are dealing with that. That's not my body right now. I've done some stuff. Like we're, <laughs> but the environment, the fact that whenever we talk about environment, Joy, you always look over at me and you say, I worry for my grandchild. And I, yours. And yeah, but I worry for me. It's Mother Earth. We're here to rent it, not destroy it. That pisses me off, well, how but, we treat things. The way I heard, what I was hearing is, unless you have a child, you don't have a stake in this country yeah. because you don't have a stake in the future of this country. <clears throat> and that is a very myopic view of this world because, as you said, there are people that don't have children by choice. There are people that don't have children 
um, because they, they, they can't have children. And there are very young Gen Z voters that are in college that are one of the growing demographics of voters that don't have children yet. They're children themselves, but they're teenagers and they can still vote. So I, I, I think it's a very myopic view, but- So at least the lady at the end, that prosecutor, whatever the hell her name is, the Puerto Rican lady, at least she did mention what J.D. Vance was getting at, that not having children but being in a high-level political office means that you don't have a stake in the game. It means you might not make decisions that are best for the country. But all they're going to do now is use this as ammunition. Anytime J.D. Vance makes a attack on Kamala, which he could make some very good attacks on her, but anytime he does it now, they're just going to bring this clip up and say, well, you're just a misogynist anyway. You just don't like women. So who are you to talk? Anything that you say about Kamala is sexist. <laughs> That's all they're going to say now. They're going to fail to address the issue. If a president has a child, they can be more relatable to the country. They can understand what all of the tens of millions of parents in the country go through. He can understand what it's like, he or she, the president. But when they don't, they really don't get it. They're an outsider looking in. It can make the president more relatable. It can make the president more empathetic and it can give the president values that they probably wouldn't ordinarily have. Now the whole stepmom, mama look crap, that's a different argument. And I know a lot of people disagree on this issue. It's very divisive. Some people are saying, well, it's completely okay, their choice. It is their choice, but he's saying, well, if they do make that choice, they're also gonna be missing a key trait in leadership that comes with being a parent. But let me know what you guys think about this. Leave me your thoughts below. Share the video. Thanks for watching.